so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i'll be solving problem c that is swap gain from round 832 uh, it is not hard to understand the solution of this problem the hard part is how do you come up with such solutions during the contest so instead of just explaining the solution i will also try to explain how you guys can think in that direction yeah so let's start with the problem before we move on to the solution, uh, I want to take a small break and tell you guys about Newton School's Premier Coding Contest. So as all of you guys love CP and all of you, all of you guys love to code, this is a great opportunity to show off your coding skills and also win some cash prizes. There are prizes worth at least 30,000 and along with this you can also win some free coding courses or also grab some internship opportunities. Right, so uh, for this reason only, Newton School organizes this contest every month on a global scale. So you can also benchmark yourself where you are lacking or where you are standing uh, compared to other students. So this month it will be on 27th October. It will be around two and a half hours starting from 9 p.m. And it is absolutely free to uh, sign up for. So there will, be, there will be a link down below. So do check out that link and sign up for the contest for absolutely free. Yeah. So let's move on to the solution now. So in the problem, uh, we have been given an array of size n where n is up to 10 to the power 5. So something like a1, a2, a3, a4, so on up to an. Also, all the elements ai are from 1 up to 10 to the power 9. So these are the constraints. Along with this, we have two people, Alice and Bob. Both of them are playing a game and they will alternate turns. Alice will move first. So in every turn, we will check if my element a1 is equal to zero then whoever has the turn loses right so if my element a1 is equal to zero then person will turn loses that is the first thing and secondly if my element a1 is not equal to zero then he will set a1 is equal to a1 minus one that is he will subtract one from my element a1 and then he will swap element a1 with some element ai where i is any index from 2 to 9 so that is how the turns work and that is the entire game so given this you have to tell who will win so if we have some array a and if both alice and bob play optimally who will win the game so given array a If both play optimally, who will win? That is the problem. So the only thing that we need to find is the optimal strategy for Alice and Bob, right? Because in these kind of problems, you just have to find the optimal strategy for both the players. And uh, these kind of problems are quite ad hoc and the optimal strategies differ from problem to problem. So it is just a matter of luck and you can say practice if you are able to think in the right direction. Uh, the solution is really easy. So I will just try to explain how you guys can think in the right direction during the contest. So here you have to play optimally. What does play optimally mean here? Uh, you can say that. Whoever sets the optimal play is whoever sets a1 equal to 0 as fast as possible. Right? Because if you don't do it in the fastest manner, the other person will do it faster. Right? So you just have to set a1 equal to 0 in the fastest manner. And if you see the operations here, uh, in your operation, your a1 value is decreasing by 1 every time. So which will be the fastest element to reach zero? So if you think about this, which will be the fastest element to reach zero? It will obviously be the smallest or you can say the minimum element. So you can just swap the minimum element with a1 and in every step value of a1 will decrease by one and minimum element will be the fastest element to reach zero. Right. Or you can also rephrase this as whoever has the control, whoever controls the minimum element 
whoever controls the minimum element will win the game right because the entire motive of the problem is to set a1 equal to 0 as fast as possible and the fastest element to do that will be the minimum element and so whoever controls the minimum element will win the game now how do i define control or what do you guys mean by control here so now let's try to define control over the minimum element so we have control over minimum element now uh, to explain this i will divide it into two cases so the first case is uh, when your minimum element uh, let's call it m is lying in index 2 to n Uh, for example, uh, we have a one, a two, a three, a four, so on up to let's say we have somewhere m in the middle, and we have a n. We have turn off Alice first, so Alice will choose m and apply operation on a one and m. So we have a one minus one first, and then we will swap these two values, right? So now we have Bob's turn, and we have m here. We have a two, a three, a four, so on. A one minus one, and we have a n. Now it's Bob's turn. Bob can choose anything. Let's say he chooses index a five. So now we have Alice's turn. We have value m minus one. These two were swapped. So we have a five, a two, a three, a four, m minus one, a one minus one, and we have a n. Again, Alice will do the same thing. She will apply the operation on the minimum element, that is m minus one. So she will apply the operation here. So we will have a five minus one, and we'll swap these two values. So we have Bob's turn again, right? So we will have m minus one here. We will have a two, a three, a four, a five minus one, a one minus one, and then we have a. So if you are able to see the pattern here. Uh, in every time when we have Bob's turn, your minimum element m is at the first index. If you if you see here, we have m minus zero here. That is the minimum element. We have m minus one here, and if you keep following the pattern, in every Bob turn, you will get m minus two in the next turn. So on in the next turn, you will get m minus three in the first index, and if you keep going, at some point the first element will become zero, right? And in this turn, Bob will lose. right so every time bob has the minimum element as the first index so at some point when that element becomes zero bob will lose uh, because as you can see here the fastest element to reach zero will be the minimum element so this element m will be the first element to become zero all other elements will be non zero all the elements will be non zero this element m will be the first element to reach zero and at that point it will be on the first index right so that's why bob will lose and that's what we mean by control so if my minimum element is lying in the range let's say 2 to n then whoever is moving first will have control over the minimum element for example here alice was moving first and your minimum element was in the range 2 to n so alice has control over the minimum element so you can say that if your element or uh, if your minimum element lies in index range 2 to n then the first person whoever moves first has control and he will win the game Now, what if your minimum element is lying on the first index? So let's talk about the second case, when your minimum element is lying on the first index. So we have m, we have a two, we have a three, so on up to a n. So your uh, minimum element m is lying on the first index now. We have Alice's turn. So Alice will apply operation on M and some uh, random element. Let's say he applies on A five again. So we have M minus one first, and then we swap the elements. So in Bob's turn, we have 
a5 we have a2 a3 we have m minus 1 and we have an so if my m is the minimum element in let's call this array a let's call this array a dash so if m is the minimum element in my array a you can say that my m minus 1 will be the minimum element in array a dash so this is just the first case right this is just case 1 so you as your minimum element your minimum element is lying in range 2 to n but the only difference is now your second person has the turn now bob has the first turn so you can say that in this case bob wins or to put it in a general way you can say that if your minimum element is on first index person with second move so you can say second person or the, or the person who moves second wins and that is the entire problem so if your minimum element is lying in the index 2 to n then the person who moves first will win uh, and that is alice in our case similarly if your element minimum element is lying on the first index then the person who moves second wins and in that case it is bob so you can just check if your minimum element lies on the first index if it does your, your answer is bob and if it lies in the index range from 2 to n then your answer is alice I don't even think you guys need to see the code for this, but still, if you guys want to see the code, uh, here is the code. I just take in my array. I will check my min minimum element uh, in the entire array. And if my first element is the minimum element, that is, it lies on the first index, then my answer is Bob. Otherwise, my answer is Alice. And that is the entire solution. So if you guys have some doubt, feel free to join my Discord server. I will be more than happy to answer your doubts there. And as you can see, the solution is not difficult, but it was hard to come up with a solution, right? So I would recommend uh, you guys to solve more game theory problems because it will build up your intuition to these kind of problems, right? And yeah, that is it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.